Hey guys, it's Elaine, the Ninja Life Coach, and welcome to my channel today. Today, we're gonna talk about the road less traveled. So sit back, grab yourselves a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Hey everybody, I'm back. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about that Robert Frost poem, A Road Less Traveled. And it starts off with two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry, I could not travel both, but I took the one less traveled by. Now that's <laughs> very, very condensed from the entire poem, but that was one of my dad's favorite poems. He liked Robert Frost. And consequently, now it's one of mine, since I don't have my dad here anymore, that every time I hear that, I think about him. But what does it mean to take the road less traveled? Does that mean we just veer off in any direction, go here, go there, do whatever we want to do? No, that's not what that means at all. Folks, I'm from the country, and you can always tell when there is a path that has not been traveled very much. Because if you go off in the woods, and you get off the, the beaten path, and you follow this little faint trail going back through here, well, you're gonna run into some thorns, you're gonna run into maybe some hedgehogs, maybe some skunks, no telling what. And it's a lot more difficult to see than the beaten path. So it's okay to take that road less traveled. You don't always have to stay on the beaten path. Remember this, remember. The beaten path is called beaten for a reason. And the reason it is, is because a lot of feet have trod on that path. A lot of feet. Now, you have to think about when you're on that type of path, where is the end result? Where am I going here? If it's something that a lot of Christian brothers and sisters have been on before and they've walked that road and that's something you feel comfortable with, nothing wrong with that. But if you feel the tug of the Holy Spirit to go over here to this path that's not very well lit, that's not very well walked, that's kind of obscure, and you're not sure, sure that the word is going to be a lamp to your feet over here because it's dark, but you still feel that tug going off over this way, Take that path because sometimes God will call you off on an obscure journey, just you and him. That's been the case in my life and that's been the case of nearly everybody I know. Nearly everyone that I know that has been a Christian for any length of time has had one of these what I call wilderness type experiences before and they're scary and they're dark and they're overgrown, and there are wolves, and there are skunks, and there are detours. There's rocks, there's stones, there's all kinds of these things. But if you persevere on that path, and you keep moving forward on that path, just like the beaten path, you eventually get to your destination over here. And when you get to the end of the destination off of a road le less traveled, you're gonna be able to turn around and you're gonna be able to say, wow, look how far I've come. You may have only traveled five feet, but that five feet may have seemed like 3,000 years in those five feet. And you can turn around and say, you know what? This was very difficult, but God led me through it. He led me down that road less traveled with his word, which is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. Because once we get on that road less traveled, let me tell you something, folks, that road less traveled, there's a lot of wonders on that road less traveled. The people who take side roads rather than the main highway, they get to see a lot of scenery. And it's the same way with walking with God when we take the road less traveled. We get to see things. God tells us things. He shows us things. You know what? I like for God to show me things. I really like that. So I will take whichever road I feel like he's telling me to take simply because I am curious enough to want to see something new and different. And God knows that about me. He frequently takes me down new and different paths because that's the way my mind works. And that's okay. 
It's the road less traveled. It's a lane's road. You have a road. You have a road with your name on it. No one's name, but yours is on that road. And it's okay that you walk it. And sometimes you walk it alone. And that's okay. Because Jesus is with us and we are never really truly alone. You may not have a physical presence with you, but God will never, ever leave you. Especially if you are a widow. Your relationship with God has been taken to a whole different level. You are a member of a club that you never asked to join. But now that you're in... Take advantage of the benefits of being a widow and let God lead you in the way he wants you to go. Let him be your husband. Just like the Bible tells us, the Lord himself will be our husband. And that's okay. That's okay. That, that, that takes nothing away from our earthly husbands. Nothing. Takes nothing away from them. That doesn't mean we don't miss our husbands. Of course we do. I miss Greg all the time. This has nothing to do with Greg. And it has everything to do with me and me needing guidance, strength, comfort, peace, joy, mercy, and grace. And that's the only place I can get all those things in one package is at the feet of Jesus. So, if you're on a road less traveled right now, and you feel alone, take heart. You aren't alone. There are people who have gone before you. Their road may not be your road, but they've had a similar experience to what you're having. There's a song by a group called Honey Tree, and it's called Pioneer. And it's no, it, there's, some of the words are, nobody else can walk this for, for you to your own frontier, you're a pioneer. And I think those words are very, very powerful because the day, the road we walk every single day, that's our frontier. Nobody else can walk that. Nobody else has walked that. Now, there are people that have gone before us, like I said, but to your own frontier, you are that pioneer. Listen, you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless you all. Love you guys. Maranatha.